today we are uh, going to continue our fourth lecture on uh, basics of uh, statistics so before that a couple of very 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 basics of statistics we had covered in three lectures before that and before that 15 to 16 lectures we took to cover our probability in great details okay so you were all witness to that and it has been a very present journey so far okay and nice experience with you guys so welcome today to 20th lecture okay guys so here is what uh, we are going to study today I'll show you today is going to be very interesting so this all mean median expected value and all we had covered with numericals all possible physical business cases we had discussed okay so today we are going to cover uh, next level which is variance okay so first of all i want to tell you like why we study variance actually so variance is nothing but suppose there are there is a range of numbers uh, from 10 to 1000 so 10 is minimum 1000 is uh, maximum so range say range in the simple measure of variance range is maximum minus minimum 1000 minus 990 uh, 1000 minus 10 990 is the range so this is also a simplest measure of variance now the uh, next question you will ask is that why sir we study variance when we have uh, something like mean median mode of the data which is nicely represents data so mean median mode as we know are central tendencies so they toward take you towards the center of the data mean will take you towards the center of the data median is perfect center of the data okay so that will not give you any idea about outliers suppose there are and we have discussed many times that if suppose there are extreme outliers like suppose in a group of people uh, like we are all professionals right we earn uh, some salary which is not very high which is not very low right well all of them we all of earn some nice salary, salary which is not very high which is very low like maybe some say uh, some up to 120 say, from fifty thousand dollars to hundred twenty thousand dollars per year we earn every one of us not nobody earns more than hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars per year and nobody earns less than fifty thousand so it is the median salary is fifty thousand plus hundred twenty thousand divided by two so that is mean and median salary you can see like we are five people third record will be the median salary now it will not give you any idea whether uh, suppose if i bring a uh, if i bring bill gates into our group and then find the median so bill gates is having uh, annual income of billions of dollars and our max our five people maximum income is 120 dollars 120 thousand dollars so average will shift towards uh, very high so uh, average of every salary will shift towards few millions with Bill Gates in the group. But the uh, fact is that five data points are only $120,000. Nobody is million dollars. Only Bill Gates is billion dollars. That's why average of all six of us shoots out to some million dollars, so which is wrongly represented. So minion is not representing the data correctly. So in such a cases, Anybody like when he is giving you mean, median, or mode, then you should always ask what is the maximum and minimum value of the data. That you should always ask to find out whether uh, uh, mean is correctly representing the data or not. And better than that, you ask standard deviation. What is standard deviation of the data? You are giving me mean, median, mode. That is okay. But along with that, give me one more unit, which is standard deviation. Then only I will accept your measurements. And otherwise, I don't have any idea about the range and uh, outlier spread of the data. Okay. So along with mean, median, mode, data is complete, like measurement is complete only when it is supplied with standard deviation. Now, I will tell you one. Now, after, after in the 20th lecture, I want you to a very, like very basic question like which would we could have taken in the, probably in the first lecture. Why we guys study statistics, guys? I want to answer from you guys. 
why we guy study statistics first of all i want to take to earth a very very basic question why to study statistics any one of you want to answer this question why we are studying statistics i, I see you all you guys always whenever i call you you assemble and uh, you spend your uh, give me your attention span of around uh, 60 minutes to not it always which is so kind of you but why you are so much interested in statistics you are learning something new that is okay but what is the tangible benefit what is the benefit uh, to your career or what is the benefit uh, suppose you are an engineer what is your benefit to you as an engineer if you know statistics tell me guys anybody Sartak Sharma why we are studying statistics sir uh, to uh... To basically study the data to derive more insights about the data that is a very high level answer yeah i want a little lower level answer i want you to, to go to a lower level okay your answer is not bad your answer is correct only i want you to go to a little more basic level to collect Anybody the data guys? to collect the data to take the decision proper decision yes yeah so see that is the right answer see I am an engineer, I am a like engineer of a machine shop, basic mechanical engineer. There are some milling machines and lathe machines in the uh, shop floor. Suppose you don't understand milling machine and lathe machine, don't worry. There are some kind of uh, engineering machine which are used to uh, mold the parts, like they can uh, change the shape of the parts. So there are milling machines, lathe machines, shaper, those kind of machines are there. Suppose I am working, churning out bolts. So you, everybody knows they have seen bolts, right? Some bolts are there. We have seen all of such. I am manufacturing bolts on a lathe machine. And suppose my daily production is suppose uh, say ten thousand bolts per uh, ten thousand bolts per uh, day is my daily production from that one lathe machine. Now um, my payment is based on uh, the measurement. client will measure uh, bolts and you will do from time to time from time to time you will do some kind of measurement we will not do measurement at the end of the day you will do measurement every hour so uh, suppose in one hour you have divided by so you have produced say 2000 bolts so those 2000 bolts you have to find out whether my bolts which i am producing they are correct or not there is there some adjustment needed in the tool or if there are any adjustment needed in the machine, controls or those kind of things, you will try to find out. Because otherwise, you are, uh, if you are producing out of maximum limit or lower, less than lower limit, you will not get payment, right? So what they will do? So now 2,000 volts in one hour you have produced. And you will not stop the production. Of course, production will continue on the left machine. But, but you have a quality guy who has got now 2,000 volts. Only diameter has to be measured. Okay, length and all, suppose it is always perfect. Diameter has to be controlled. Diameter of the bolt. Suppose upper limit is 10.02 and lower limit is 9.7. And one is the minimum limit of the diameter and maximum limit is 10.02 mm. Now you are measuring the bolt. All the measure. All the measurement should be seven or less than or equal to ten point zero. Fine, that's what I want. So I'm measuring one one parameter or one value of bolt. So like that, suppose I measure two thousand bolts. I'm taking suppose hundred percent inspection. No hundred percent inspection. But uh, suppose today I am doing 100% inspection and uh, suppose I am measuring 2000 bolts, all I measured and I have 2000 data points. Now with these 2000 data points, how will I find what is the problem? Whether there is a problem in the material, whether there is a problem in the machine, like a person who is doing, working with the bolts, machinist, machinist is a problem, worker is a problem, then only bolt, bolt uh, diameter will be keep on varying too much, right? 
So whether machinist is a problem, where a tool is a problem, where tool is big or short. If tool is very big, bolt will be shorter. If tool is short, bolt will be very bigger. If there is a problem in the machine setting. So those kind of things I want to find out. So there are too many variables which can go wrong. So how do I find out? the problem in the machine? Is how do I find out? So statistics gives you the answer. 2000 data points you have. Then you have some tools like all 2000 data points. Simply if you give to a statistician, he will tell you whether machinist is the problem or uh, machinist may be drunk or he may be sleepy or uh, he might be unwilling to work so much. So he can tell you either machinist is a problem or the tool which is uh, grinding the nut, the, the bolt, that is a problem or machine itself is a problem. That statistician can tell. How? Suppose bolts are suppose bigger and bigger. All the bolts are bigger than 10.05. Limit is 10.05 and all bolts are up more, more, more than 10.05. 10, 10 uh, so your uh, graph is going up. Like <clears throat> no bolt is less than, like 90% of the bolts are about 10.05. What does it mean, guys? What does it mean? All the bolts are bigger than 10.05. So what does it mean? How? What do you infer as an engineer? What does it mean? Whether machine is a problem, whether worker is a problem, or something else is the problem, or whether tool is a problem, what do, how, what do you infer? All bolts are bigger than the maximum limit. 90% of the bolts are bigger than maximum limit. What do you infer, guys? Who is the problem? Or suppose some all bolts are bigger than 10.05, or lower limit is 9.5, 90% of the bolts are lower than 9.5 9.5 mm. So either they are short or, or they are uh, big. So I, uh, at a time only one problem will occur. Suppose only one problem is occurring. All bolts are above 9, 10.05 mm. So what do you inform? Who is the problem? Tool is the problem or uh, worker is the problem? Tell me, guys. Any case, don't worry. Why worker, worker is, is a problem? problem. Why is any? Why worker is a problem? Don't give just guess. No, why no, worker no, is a problem? Not the guess. I mean, give me reason also. No? give me reason also. Why worker? How do you infer worker is a problem? So uh, we'll check with the. I mean, the process first actually. So if the process is of checking that uh, the bolt or the production or the sample first. Then, uh, if he's not doing his job, then obviously he's the problem. Not the right answer. Anybody else wants to try? Sartha, Karthik, Arjuna, anybody else? Who is the problem? I am giving you only two possibilities either worker or the tool. Which is the problem? See, if you are not able to tell, I'll tell you. See, if you are grinding, suppose this particular uh, piece of uh, glass. And uh, all tools are uh, like, I have set it on the machine. I set it on the machine. And machine, obviously, I'll set between uh, 9.5, which is the lower limit, and 10.05, which is the higher limit. Between, the, between that only, I'll set to make the bolt, to grind this. Then suppose all are bigger. Then what is the problem? Very obvious, bolt tool itself is a problem. Suppose that tool, see, it is rotating. It is rotating. And tool is there. So if tool is shorter, if tool is shorter, then all the parts will be bigger, right? If tool itself is shorter, then all the all the parts will be more bigger diameter. If tool is longer than uh, what is required, then all the bolts will be of shorter diameter. And suppose variation is random. Variation is random. Then we can infer that there is no problem because I know neither tool is a problem nor uh, worker is a problem. If variation is random, Random is some to some variation, some bolts are more than some bolts are higher, but variation is random. There is no order in that. There is no cycle or there is no order. If variation is totally random, process variation is totally random, then we can tell that everything is all right. It is a general process variation which is there in the so general process variation will be random. But if some bias is there. Some bias, there is a pattern, there is a cycle, 
or there is two more on the upper side, more on the lower side, then we have to think what is the problem. Then there will be either workal will be problem or uh, tool will be a problem. Then we have to do the adjustment. But if variation is totally random, then there is no problem in the process. Yes, go on uh, producing the bolts. Because any process in like machining and we get having random variations will be there. Some will be up randomly, some will be down randomly. So if you plot it, it will be just a random uh, plot. It will not be any straight line or any sinusoidal curve or any balloon or any kind of cluster, any kind of cluster, those kind of things. Any pattern will not be seen. Only random. Random will be there means process is perfect. If any bias is there in the plot, that means either tool is a problem or worker is a problem. Then you have to analyze further. Okay. So I just gave you as an example of a mechanical engineer. So any experiment you do or any measurement you do, it is never one value. Any measurement if you do or any experiment like physician, like physicist does, scientist does any measurement. Or if you measure current, it is not always one time you measure. You always have a set of values. So you, when you have a set of values, then there is a role of statistics to play. Statistics plays a role. So whenever you have a group of values and set of values, then you need to find out whether my to tool setting is correct, whether my worker is properly trained to operate it or not. And those kind of things you want to check. As, and whether how, how valid my results are. So always you always like whenever you do any measurement, they are always in a group of uh, number. There will be a group of numbers. And with that group of numbers, if you apply a little bit statistical mind, if you them, just plot them. Little uh, if random variation, if you get, there is no problem anywhere. If you get more bias, then there is some problem. Okay. So that's why your statistics is uh, generally we study statistics because. It is very fundamental to any measurement, like any experiment, any measurement generally is a group of values. Never just height of a person only will measure only once. Okay, not, not the age of a lady will ask any, only once in your life because you will anyway get a chappal second time you will not ask. Okay, so age of a, like those kind of things you will do only once, but maximum experiments, maximum measurements you will always do multiple times same thing to ascertain whether i'm measuring correctly or not so it will be a group of numbers and when you have group of numbers you want to validate whether whatever results i got they are representing valid phenomena or not they are uh, like process they are validly representing my process or not if some bias is there then you want to remove that bias from the process okay so now, when generally there are many kind of and when there, there is a set of values, we have a distribution. We have a distribution, right? So we have a distribution of values. So like uh, maximum values will be to near, to near the peak and a very less value will be towards the end. So there will be a distribution. So like many statistical processes or many machine learning methods, assume data to be in a certain form. And maximum time we assume that data is in normal form, like uniform Gaussian distribution. We assume a perfect bell curve. Why we assume a perfect bell curve? Because we know the shape of that curve. We know the properties of that curve. How many percent, like 68% lies between 95, 95% confidence interval. We have not studied so far. We'll study confidence interval and all that. So for 95% interval, 68% data will lie. And uh, plus minus three sigma, uh, plus minus three standard deviation, or plus minus three sigma, 99% of the values will lie. So oh, we know the properties of that uh, bell curve. That's why we assume that whatever data we have taken, or whatever measurements are we have taken, so they are in a bell shape curve. That this is the uh, generally assumption. And many phenomena, many statistical things, Many physical phenomena work with the assumption that data is normally distributed. Our measurements are normally distributed. So how the normal distribution plot will come? Suppose you have taken 100, 100 measurements. 20 measurements uh, will be, say, 20 measurements will be 10.7. 
and uh, 20 measurements will be less than 10.7 and 20 measurements, uh, some other measurement will be more than 10.7. So you will plot frequency. How many times I have got 10.7 frequency on y-axis and measurement on x-axis. That's how you plot, plot your bell curve, right? 100 measurements. So how many times I am observing this value? So frequency I will plot on the y-axis and uh, data I will plot on the x-axis. That's how I get the bell curve. So once I have bell curve, I can uh, work out like I know many th many things about bell curve because I completely I know how my bell curve is. So that will study like confidence interval and all that. So we can determine probability and we can do much more, many more things with bell curve. But suppose data is not uh, data is not bell curve. You have either uh, so this I will show you. See here, this I want to show you. See here. Now you hear. You see here now the data. The data is not the bell curve. Data is not bell curve here. Okay, data is not bell curve here. So what, what the data is? Data is not bell curve here. So see, it is a it's a kind of hill. So left hand side is a negative skew. So see, negative means how to remember negative skew? Means if suppose you want to write minus five. Okay, so suppose let's say suppose left tail is more longer. Suppose left tail is longer, then it is negatively skewed. Left tail is longer. See here, negatively skewed means left tail is longer. And suppose your data is positively skewed, then right tail will be longer. That's how you have to see. It is not bell curve, right? It is not a perfect bell curve. It is a skewed curve. If left tail is longer, it is negatively skewed. And if right tail is longer, it is positively skewed. So your properties of your uh, Gaussian distance distribution properties of your bell curve will not apply in this case because data is skewed your measurements are skewed so you cannot apply properties of uh, gaussian distribution in this case so what is there on the x-axis x-axis suppose i have measured height of 100 persons so height i will plot on the height i am plot uh, i will how uh, height i will plot on the uh, x-axis y-axis what is there Y axis is suppose I'm getting 10.2 measurements, like 10 point, some like some 5.7 inches measurement. Suppose when I'm adults, I'm measuring. So 5.7 measure, 5.7 inches measurement support, I'm getting five times. So five times I'm getting 10.7 inches. Five persons are 10.7. So five is the frequency, right? That frequency I will plot on. Frequency like frequency 10, 20, 5, 10, 20, 25, up to 100. Because I have uh, data up to 100. So 10, 5, 5, 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, like that, I plot up to 100. So now I will, I'm getting 5. 5 times I'm getting, 5 times I'm getting, Five times I'm getting the height, 5.7. So 5.7 I'll plot on x-axis and five I'll plot. So this five times here and uh, like five times here, and then I'll match it with. So like that, I'll get this curve. Guys, any problem with any how to plot this curve? Anybody has any problem? Amit? No, no, sir. You know, you can plot this curve, right? Yes, you have yes. number of data. So how many how many times you are getting frequency you will plot on y axis, and the measurement you will plot on one 5 5.7, 5.5, 5.8. That all you will plot on x axis. So that is how you plot yes. your data. So either your data can be a perfect bell curve, bell curve, or it can be a skewed curve like this. There is no third possibility, right? It can be either perfectly symmetrical towards the center. Or it can be left the negatively skewed, or it can be positively skewed. Most of the time, you will find that your data is not a perfect bell curve. It is generally left left skewed, or uh, your uh, right skewed. Suppose you are um, plotting cricket scores. There are eleven uh, eleven candidates, and you are plotting uh, their uh, scores. 
So scores you will plot on uh, everybody likes scores are Sachin Tendulkar scores uh, scored 90, and there are many other ballers who scored uh, two three ballers who scored 10. So 10 to 90, 10, 20, 90 up to 90 you will plot on x-axis, and uh, frequency you will plot on y-axis. So three ballers scored only 10. So three you will plot on y-axis. Like that you will plot this data. So that data will be skewed only because the person who the number of people who scored three that also will be less and the person person who scored person who scored 90 or near to 90 that also will be less maximum person will be more than like 30 40 50 like that so it will be skewed data it will not be symmetrical data okay so many data measurements you take so they are symmetrical they are asymmetrical they are not symmetrical when you plot them so generally assuming assuming that my data is symmetrical when it is not uh, symmetrical you are uh, not uh, doing justice to your measurements because data is either negatively skewed or positively skewed but you are assuming that it is uh, symmetrical only and then applying the forcefully applying the properties of gaussian distribution that is not correct when data is skewed like this you have to apply the properties of Skewed distribution. You don't. You cannot apply the properties of uh, Gaussian distribution or well curve. So that's why we have to study skewness. Okay. So now, now guys, till now, here any question? Oh, sir. This was a kind of uh, introduction to you that why we study statistics. What is skewness? Why skewness is important? So those kind of things I wanted to outliers. Why outliers are important? Why mean and median has no meaning if they are not supplied with standard deviation? Those kind of questions, basic questions I tried to answer uh, with this uh, particular. Uh, so like if any questions are there, you ask later because these are very basics to, if you are studying statistics, you should know all these things. So that's why we are studying spread and skewness today. Topic of today is spread and skewness and this was only the introduction so far okay things are very simple and many of things we have already studied so many of these things we have already studied so don't uh, don't uh, give me a second okay sorry For that guys. So now today we will be studying the quartiles, interquartile range, variance, standard deviation. See, all this we have already discussed many times in our previous lectures. Today, two things are introduced new, which is skewness and uh, kurtosis. These two concepts are new today. Everything else is a, just a revision for you. Okay, so we'll still I will uh, explain you everything in detail. So that even if you have forgotten from the past, you remember it uh, in today's lecture. So till point number six, we have already studied and you all know some of the, some memories you have. If you don't have, you have PPTs you can refer and uh, see, but still I will uh, revise for the completeness. Okay. okay. So now see this kind of data. These two plots are there. In one plot, you have a peak in the middle. And other plot, below plot is, uh, there is a flat in middle. Three values are, three columns are equal. And uh, first plot, there is a peak. So here, you see the mean is still five. Here also see, mean is, see, three are equal. So like mean is still equal. Mean is still uh, like, how oh, it is. So five, seven. Spread is Instagram, so I can take the median meeting, but spread is different. So they don't have identical. Okay, any anyway. So how, uh, let us not uh, read this particular description. Let us see the plots only. So how these plots are different? How, how can we define, see here. Uh, see here the count is not correct here, but suppose a case where uh, the mean is always equal. Mean is equal here. Mean is, 
So here, no, okay, anyway, mean is equal. Okay, here also mean is 5. Because values we are plotting on the x-axis, I'm sorry. So mean here is 5. And below also mean is 5, you see. Can you read it? On the, in the top, uh, top chart, mean is 5. Because values I'm plotting on x-axis. In the bottom chart also mean is 5 only. Because values are being plotted on the and a, a y axis, there are only frequencies count, discount. So don't go on count, just read on x axis. So mean is 5 in both the cases. But what is different here, guys? Can anybody tell me what is different here? What is different here, guys? Below is the uh, range and uh, above is the h point. No, no, both are representing histogram only. Both diagrams are exactly the same. Sir, variance is different. Yes, yes, yes. yes. See, variance is different. Okay. So here is 9 minus 1. So variance is 8. In the below one I am talking about. So maximum limit is 9, you see. And below limit is 1. So 9 minus 1 variance is 8. No, not variance. Range is 8. And uh, here, it is 7.5 minus uh, 2.5. 2.5 is minimum and 7.5 is higher. So 7.5 minus 2.5, 5, range is 5. Here, 7 minus 1, range is 8. Sorry, 9 minus 1, range is 8. Above range is uh, 5. So that is different. So in above plot, even if mean is same, the data is more uh, near to center, distributed towards center. In above plot, in both the cases, mean is 5. But spread, spread is less. Spread is less in above case. So data is more concentrated towards the mean. In uh, bottom plot, data is more spread out. See here now, you have mean as same. But uh, still, uh, your uh, like uh, range is different. If range is different, your standard variance and uh, standard deviation and variance also will be different. So this is a live example that you have. You can have different kind of uh, things where mean can be the same, but still your uh, variance, standard deviation, and range are different. So that's why suppose if somebody is giving you the value of, uh, so you cannot say these two plots are same. Because variance, standard deviation, and range, all three are different for both. Right? Range spread is different for both. Even though mean is same, so data is not like mean is not representing data properly. Mean is five in both the cases, but still data plots are different. Because why spread is different in both the cases? That's why if somebody is giving you value of mean, you should always ask what is the standard deviation in this case. If standard deviation and mean are equal in two cases, that then only you can say that it is identical data. If in two data sets, mean and standard deviation, suppose they are equal, and range are equal, range, mean and standard deviation, if they are equal, then you can uh, tell that it is a kind of identical data. Okay. So now that was one example. So uh, the measure of spread gives an idea of how well mean or uh, mean how well mean represents represent data and you know, spread gives like mean mean suppose if uh, the range is very high or standard deviation is very high mean is not the proper representation of the data if mean is near if standard deviation is near zero very low value standard deviation one very near to very zero, near to zero that means data is uh, mean is mean is the proper uh, representation of the data that is one example of spread if the spread of values of data set is large then mean is not as representative of the data as if the data set is small suppose standard deviation is near to zero then mean is the real representation if standard deviation is more mean is not the real representation many times we have discussed that and if you are doing a measuring the same thing if you are measuring the same bolt, or if you are measuring the same thing, if you are measuring the same experiment, same phenomena, if you are measuring the diameter of same bolt, what as a as a engineer, what would you want? You want standard deviation to be more or less, guys? 
I'm measuring diameter of the same kind of bolt. Now it is little bit variation is there. So ideally to be uh, ideally you want standard deviation to be more or less. Guys. So less. Less, right? Why you want less? Because my bolt diameter should be around 10 mm. So if standard deviation itself is 5 mm, that means I have done what I have done. My bolt is junk. Nothing. Suppose my bolt diameter should be around 10 mm and my standard deviation is 0 0.01. That means variation of my measurement is very less. That means my manufacturing process is good. My I am doing good. So that's why suppose in research, I am measuring anything. I would want that my standard deviation should be less. Amit Parik understood? Yes, sir. Amit? Yes, 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 sir. Gajendra Karthik, is this understood? Yes, sir. Now, how yes. to measure spread? Now we have understood the importance of spread. If suppose I'm measuring the bolts, uh, measuring the bolt, uh, bolt should be diameter should be 10 mm. And my standard deviation itself is 2 mm. That bolt will not fit into my nuts. Uh, it will not fit. So what I have to do, I have to reject all the bolts and uh, see what is the problem. Tool is the problem, worker, I have to change the worker or something else is the problem. So that I have to see, I have to correct my manufacturing process. If standard deviation is less, then only I can accept those kind of things. So now, how to measure standard law, how to measure, you cannot say standard spread is more. You cannot say like that, you have to measure it, right? So you should measure it, how to measure? Now here in this data, like I have, you have a range of data. What is what is minimum and maximum here? So twenty. What is minimum? What is maximum? Here? Eighty-five is maximum. Yeah. Yeah. So what is range? What is range? Twenty-three to eighty-five. No, twenty-three minus uh, eighty-three minus twenty-three. That is the range. Uh, sorry. So sixty-two. Sorry, yeah. 60. Yeah, 62. That is the range. Yeah. Now, you, now you got... So spread is one of the measure of... Uh, very primitive measure, but one of the measure for spread. If range is more, means your spread is more. That is one thing. Now, so now you got... Uh, yeah, same thing I have repeated. So now, suppose there is some date. Somebody comes with... Uh, there is some pressure... And uh, you are uh, you are doing some survey for marketing. You are measuring height of school children. Now you are asking age of the suppose not height height also you can take but for now you take age. You are asking age of school children. Okay, so school children are there from say first standard till tenth standard. You are asking their age. And that pressure comes with uh, data that uh, minimum age is uh, seven years and maximum age is 123 years. So you should throw the data then in there, right? Yes, high school, the high school student, how can the age be 123? You should throw the data, junk data, right? If suppose uh, you are measuring height of the children, so height of the children will be around four feet to five feet, eight inch. Some children are very tall and some are short. So four foot two inches to five feet eight inches. So this kind of data is presented to you. You will accept that data. But children, height is represented as seven point five feet. Will you accept that data? If that data is there, then you will go there and to find out. Oh, would I have discovered the tall tallest man of the world? Tallest man is around seven feet something. He stays in Pakistan. He is seven feet, little less than eight feet. So, so, but school children you cannot have. So your data should have meaning. So from range itself, you can find out that what kind of data is being collected. Suppose you are measuring uh, diameter of a bolt and uh, diameter should, you know that diameter should be around 10 mm. And guy is coming with you minimum value of diameter, minimum bolt measured as 5 mm. Maximum board measure at 70 mm. You will throw that data. You will say, Bada, either you have a trunk and measured, either your measuring instrument is wrong, or there is some gross uh, something wrong in the manufacturing process. Right? So seeing the range itself, 
you can infer many things. If range is absurd, not as expected, it depends on the business problem, right? So in, in, in uh, bold measurement, acceptable range will be different. In age, acceptable range, range will be different. In height, acceptable range will be different. So it depends on the business problem. So seeing the range itself, you, you can uh, infer uh, many things. OK, guys. So seeing range itself, you can infer many things. And you can see what kind of quali what quality of data is presented to you. OK. So like uh, we have uh, so many times we have discussed these kind of uh, mean represent data properly only when there are not, not extreme outlier, not extreme lower, not extreme higher. Then only mean represents. When standard deviation is less, less towards zero, then only mean represents, true value represents the data. If outliers are there, you better don't go with mean, you better go with median. Okay. And uh, even better, uh, even better, uh, even better measure is interquartile range. So I will tell you what is the interquartile range in the uh, next slides to come. Now, now suppose here I will explain you. See here this data. You see with data, it is always easy to explain, right? So take this data. So there are uh, even number of samples, two to four to six. Ten, 10 values are there, arranged in uh, ascending order. They are all arranged in ascending order. 10 values are there. Minimum is 62 and uh, maximum is 81. So now if you want to find median, median is there, is, so it is not odd number, right? So you, you want to, how, how you find out the median, how you will get the median Amit Parikh in this case? How you will get median in this case? So, uh, median don't maximum. worry, Messi. Maximum, maximum minus uh, minimum divided by two. Uh, no, no, that will not be the case. Median, suppose uh, I have extreme outliers on the one get I have will get salary and one get is your or my salary. Then your median will be wrong this way, no? Yes, sir. It's not correct definition of median. You are forgetting. Anybody wants to guess how to calculate median in this case? There are 10 values, 62 to 81. How to calculate median in this case? The difference between middle two values. How to calculate? Tell me there are numbers given in front of you. How to calculate? 70 plus 72 divided by 2. Yes. 72 divided by 2. Middle two numbers. Middle two numbers. Two, we will take middle two values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you will take fifth value, which is 70, and you will take sixth value, which is 72. So fifth value plus sixth value. That is 70 plus 72 divided by 2, 71 will be the median. Now here in this case, there are only nine values, two, four and six and three, only nine values. How you will calculate the median in this case? Only nine values are given. 63 to 81. How you will calculate the median? Middle number will be. Middle, middle number. Be. There is no need to take any average. You are keep forgetting, guys. You are uh, understanding everything. After going home, you are all busy with your daily routines and all. You are not revising. So you keep forgetting things. You understand everything I know, but you should have to revise to remember. So see, if, if, number, if N is odd, then middle value will be taken as median. If N will be even, then middle two value average will be taken as median. That is very clear. Now, how to calculate? Uh, how to calculate? Uh, how to calculate uh, percentile? I, you, I many times I have told you. You go home and see the difference between percentage percentile. If you have not seen today, you have to last chance to understand. Okay. Now, percentile means suppose seventy one. I got a median because n is n. Is, even here, so 71 I get as my even, my median. Below 71, all the value is lower half. Above 71, all the values are upper half. So be, below 50 percent, 0 to 50 percent is 62, 63, 64, 64, and 70. These are 0 to 50 percent values. 
and 51% to 100% values are 72, 76, 77, 81, and 81. Got it? So lower half and above half. So lower 50%, above 50%. So this 71, 71 will be called as exactly median, median, median will be called, that is called 50 percentile. This is called for 50 percentile. Tile, huh? not percentage, 50 percentile. Now, how to calculate 25 percentile? Lower half, there are five values. Middle value will be 25 percentile. So see, lower half, there are five values, right? 62, 63, 64, 64. 64 yeah. So middle value is 64. Third value. Yeah. So that is my 25 percentile. How to calculate uh, 75 percentile? Upper half I take. Upper half is 72, 76, 77, 81, 81. Middle value is 77. That is 75 percentile. Now I have, what is zero percentile, guys? What is zero percentile? And what is 100 percentile? Now you should be able to answer. 81. 81, 81 is 100 or zero? 100. 100. How much? How much? 181. No. no. 100. No. What is first tile? What is zero percentile? Sixty-two. And what is hundred percentile? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. Right. Now you got it. So now you got it. Now you got how to calculate uh, zero percentile, twenty-five percentile, fifty percentile, seventy-five percentile, and uh, see below twenty-five percentile, there are twenty-five percent of the value. Below, below, below 25th percentile, there are 20, there are 20 percent of the values. Below 75 percentile, there are 20 percent of the values. Okay. So now you got how, now, now any confusion guys, how to calculate 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100 percentile? No, sir. Now this was the case when n is even. See, there are 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, where there are 10 numbers, n is equal to 10 here. Yes. 10 values are there. So, this is how to calculate. Now, upper, see, now it is a little interesting in case of uh, uh, if n is odd. See, n is odd means calculation of median is very easy. Median value, middle value is 72. My fifth value is 72. I have only nine values. So, fifth value will be middle, four below, four up. For below it, for above it. So 72 is my fifth value. So median is very easy to calculate. Now it is little tricky to calculate percentile, 25 percentile and uh, 75 percentile. Read it, guys, and tell me how to how they have calculated 50 and 70, 25 and 75. How they have calculated? Very easy if you read it little bit uh, with percentile. Yeah. How 25 percentile is calculated? Here it was very easy to calculate, right? Because there were five numbers below median. So middle value is third value, 64, you got it as a 25 percentile. Now here, same 25 percentile you cannot calculate because there are only four values uh, below median. So how to calculate that? Sir, we'll calculate uh, the median for the lower half and the upper half. Yes, you calculate the median for lower half and upper half. So you just calculate second and third value divided by two. Upper half means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven and eight value divided by two. That is 75 percentile. Got it, guys? Amit Parik. Yes, sir. Are you enjoying it or you are getting confused? No, no, sir. I mean, it's, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying, na? So now you know if n is even, if n is even here, calculation of my median will be little tricky because I have to calculate the average for median. But 25 percentile values and 75 percentile value will be very easy to find because directly I can pick up the middle numbers. Now here, when n is odd, my calculation of median will be easy. But 25 percentile calculation and 75 percentile calculation will be little Tricky. Got it, guys? 
Anybody confused so far? Anybody? Gajendra, Karthik, anybody confused so far? If n is even, how to calculate 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100 percentile? If n is odd, how to calculate 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100 percentile? You should be able to do that now. Okay. No so anybody confused guys so far? Just ask me the question. Now, 25 percentile value is always called Q1. 50 percentile value is called Q2. 50 percentile. And 75 percentile value is called Q3. It's a standard notation. If somebody gives you Q1, means you should understand it is first quarter. Means 25 percentile. If somebody gives you Q3, means you should understand the last quarter, 20, like 75 percentile. Now, what is interquartile range? Interquartile range, don't worry by the terminology. Interquartile range is just the difference between Q3 minus Q1, middle 50 percent values. Interquartile range is nothing but middle 50 percent values, Q3 minus Q1. So, Q3 minus Q1 will represent middle 50 percent or not, guys? Yes, sir. So, middle 50 percent values are called in interquartile range. So just subtract Q3 minus Q1. So, here Q3 is, uh, Q, Q3 is 79 and Q1 is 64. So, 79 minus 64 will be your interquartile range. Got it, guys? Yes, sir. Now, today, for your conf confusion between percentage and percentile, should be solved forever. Percentage. The percentage, uh, part, uh, your percentile is always by position of the number. Position of the number, whether it is middle or it is 25 number, like the lower half or upper, like that you calculate by position. Percentage is not by, see, percentage calculation is not by position. It is by value. See, suppose percentage, I have uh, numbers 1 to 100. I have numbers 1 to 100. One number is 100 and one number is uh, one number is 100 and one number is 1. Only two numbers I have. So how much is the 100? How much percent is the 100? Tell me. How much percent is the 100 of 101? How much percent? 100 is of 101. So 100 divided by 101 into 100. Right? So it will be more than 99%. If I have num maximum number is 100 and 1, 100 will be how much? 100 value will be how much percent of it? You all Gujarati guys here, yeah? you should be able to calculate percentage, right? So 100, 100 means 100 divided by 101 into 100. That will be my percentage. So it will be very large number. So it will be around 99. It will be around 99 percentage. Now here, not like that. If, even if 100 is there, 100 is there in the extreme or there in, in some other place, it is not the, it is by position. Here, percentile is always by position. So you have to find middle number of the lower half means it is Q1. Middle number of the upper half means it is Q3. Middle number of entire range means it is um, Q2, means median. Got it? It is by position. And uh, percentage is by value. Got it, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anna, percentile will be by value, position, and percentage will be by value. Got it, guys? So you should now know the difference between uh, percentage and percentile. If not clear, I will devote full lecture today to explain this. But today, you should not go out of here without understanding the difference between percentage and percentile. Got it, guys? Thank percentage you. teaching, yes. I will not teach you because it is taught in uh, fourth or fifth standard. So we should know how to calculate percentage. So that is okay. But percentile, I have taught you like if n is even, how to calculate. If n is odd, how to calculate percentile. Okay. So yes, anybody, any difference between percentage, percentile, any problem? No, sir. Perfectly understood.
अमित पारिक गजेंद्र कार्तिक ओके सो विथ दिस एंड यू अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज इंटर क्वार्टाइल लेवन नथिंग बट क्यू थ्री माइनस क्यू वन क्यू थ्री सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट आइल क्यू वन इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट आइल सो हियर क्यू थ्री माइनस सो देर इज अ वेरी पॉपुलर मेथड फॉर रिमूविंग आउटलायर सो हाउ डू यू मैथमेटिकली डिसाइड सी इफ समबडी इफ आई एम इंट्रोड्यूसिंग बिल गेट्स इन द रूम एंड वी फाइव आर देयर ऑब्वियसली ब्लाइंड पर्सन ऑल्सो विल टे बिल गेट्स इज अउटलायर because he is a billionaire and we are all poor middle class guys but suppose there is a range of numbers given to you range of numbers given to you and you have to find which number is outlier you cannot nobody is bill gates here so all numbers are nearby to each other so how to find out which number is outlier you should know much some mathematical measure should be there right some mathematical measure should be there to find out outlier so this is their mathematical measure you do what you first calculate q1 that is 25 percentile you then calculate q3 which is 75 percentile and apply this formula any number below this formula q1 minus 1.5 q3 minus q1 first i'll take the difference of q3 minus q1 multiplied with with 1.5 And subtract it from Q1. So that will be my lower range. Any number below Q1 minus 1.5 into Q3 minus Q1. One one Q1 minus 1.5 into interquartile range is my lower outlier. Any number above Q3 plus 1.5 into interquartile range is my upper outlier. What it guys? Formula is very simple. it's a popular method uh, used by statisticians data scientists to calculate outlier so any number below this i'll remove and any uh, i can remove i should consider removing and any number above q3 into plus 1.5 into q3 minus q1 i should consider removing got this formula guys so the interquartile range is very important 50% i'll find out and then i will i'll difference q1 minus 1.5 into 1.1.5 into interquartile range and q3 plus q3 plus 1.5 into interquartile range i will do and interquartile range is nothing but q3 minus q1 so that's how i determine my outlier so it will be more clear to you with the help of if i do an example see here so now so you see here my i want to show you like here no note down guys guys note down so here 70 so i want you to note down something so here in this formula you 379 so here it is taking 77 Okay, guys. So it is taking some other other example. Suppose you calculate Q three and Q one. Suppose you calculate Q three and Q three and Q one. Q one is nothing but your twenty five percent. So Q Q one comes as sixty four, and Q three, which is your seventy five percent, it comes as seventy seven. Then how to calculate uh, lower limit and upper limit? So see, lower limit is nothing but Q one. Q one is sixty four minus. 1.5 into q3 q3 is 77 minus q1 like that so 44.5 so any number below 44.5 any number below 44.5 will be my lower uh, outlier and any number above 77 which is q3 plus 1.5 into 77 minus q q3 minus q4 Q Q three minus Q one, sorry Q three minus Q one, yeah Q three minus Q one will is ninety six point five. So upper any number above ninety six point five is my upper outlier, and any number below forty four point five is my any number uh, any number below any number below point forty four point five is my lower outlier, any number above. Ninety six point five is my upper outlier. Got it, guys? How it is to calculate? Yes. Now yes. consider the number sixty four to eighty one. Now I am giving you a number with these numbers. 
I am giving you number 64 to 81. Is there any outlier in this, guys? My numbers are varying between 62 to 81. Is there any outlier in this? See, my lower limit is 44, upper limit is 96. I am giving you numbers between 62 to 81. Now it is should be simple now. Whether any outlier no is outliers. there. No outlier because 62 is above 44, which is my lower limit. And 81 is above my higher limit. So there is no outlier. It is well within the range. Got it, yes. guys? Yes, sir. So this is how you have to see. And outlier, whenever I see this is my lower outlier, this is my outer outlier. It is not always possible in analysis to remove the outlier because you have so less values. Your number of readings are so small, so you cannot uh, remove outliers. You have to work with outliers. So you have to, in that, suppose you are working with linear regression and those kind of linear models, linear regression, logistic regression. Then without uh, removing outlier, no need to apply them. Don't consider them. But now, if you decide that outliers cannot be removed, then don't apply linear regression and logistic regression. Then there are some other mathematical, uh, there are other machine learning models which you can use to. When outliers are there, they will work well, which like random forest and exibus. Even if outliers are there, they work well. So apply them. So like that, you have to consider. If you have a large number of readings, large number of readings, then better to remove like uh, outliers. But you have very small number of readings, 30, 40, 50 readings. Then you cannot remove outliers. Then in that case, don't apply linear models. You apply DC entry model, which is your random forest and XE boost. So you are not covering them because machine learning we are not covering. I'm just giving the names of the, don't, even if you don't worry, we have not taught them. Amit Parikh, is it understood how to calculate outliers? Leave it for yes, outliers? Yes, yes, sir. With the formula, okay. whatever is below that and above that is the outline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Guys, nice. very nice. Any Gajendra Singh understood? Karthik? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, with this, uh, <coughs> like uh, now, now here. Here, can, can can anybody give me the average of 61 to 62 to 81? What will be the average? Mathematical average. I am not asking median. I am asking average. Mathematical average. What will be the average of 62 to 81? Only two numbers are there, 62 and 81. What will be the average? Sir, 71.5. 71.5. So how you calculate it? 62 is one number, 82 is 81 is one number. So 62 plus 81 divided by 2 because n is 2 only. So here 71.5. So suppose average is 71.3 for the time being, 71.3. So suppose like this kind of data is given to you. And uh, mean is given to you as mathematical mean is given to you as 71.3. But suppose that patient, uh, patient's uh, blood pressure is varying too much or not, that how the doctor will know. Suppose his, how much is to know his heart condition, maybe doctor wants to know, a heart, a heart specialist wants to know, okay, this is the mean uh, blood pressure. You give me mean blood pressure is 71.3. But what is the variation in blood pressure? That also you give me, that then only I can assess the condition of heart. So you have to give 71.3 is the mean and standard deviation is 7.2. Then only your data, data will be complete. Then only you will, you will be able to judge whether uh, the 71, 71.3 is the near true value. If standard deviation is high, see if standard deviation is high. That means his blood pressure is varying too much. This was just the example. So... Now we are learning how to calculate variance and standard deviation. So this also we had uh, covered some time back. So analyze, uh, so I have explained you two measures of spread so far. One is range. Range is nothing but minimum minus, minimum minus maximum. That is range, maximum minus minimum, that is range. One measure I have explained you is interquartile range. Interquartile range, how to calculate with quartile. Percentile. 
right? How to calculate with percentiles? That's what I have calculated. Another measure is variances, standard deviation. So variances, standard deviation, both are same. Standard deviation is nothing but square root of variance. So suppose I calculate, suppose I know variance, I know standard deviation also. Simply put it in calculator and just take the square root. So if I know variance, I know standard deviation also. Formulas are same, just square root difference is there. So variance and standard deviations are also two measures of dispersion. Dispersion means range, spread. Okay. So how to calculate like now here? Tell me guys here why these three curves are there. So top to bottom you number them. Suppose the, the, the peak Mount Everest here, uh, Mount Everest is curved two, then shorter peak is number two and the hill, the flat hill is number three. Where variance is more here? Which case variance is more guys? One, third two, one. three. Third, third one. Third one's variance is more, right? You understand that? Yeah. If variance is more, the spread curve will be is, more. Yeah. Curve will be flat. Yeah. All understand this, guys? Rajendra Sardak? No rocket science in this? Yes. If variance is less, the curve peak will be higher and the number will be spread will be lower. And if variance is higher, variance is higher the curve will be spread out and peak will be lower. And if variance is less, peak will be high and uh, spread of the car will be less. Got it, guys? This, yes, you, this you know. What are the properties of variance, first of all? Variance is always represent, it can be zero. Variance can be zero. If all numbers are same, if I'm uh, giving a data set to you in which all values are 25, if all values are 25, means variance is zero, there is no variance, no spread. All values are 25. And in data science, suppose there is such a data column in which all the values are same. Such a data column doesn't have any meaning for us in data science. There must be some variance in the values for machine learning model to run and learn something out of it. If some data column is constant, all values 25, all values 50, then better to drop that data column in data science. So in data data value, in data science, always some variance should be there in the data column. If variance is large, more uh, learning will be more by the machine learning model. So how machine learning model learns, that would detail we are not going. But right now you remember rule of the thumb. If variance is large, machine learning model will learn more. If variance is small, machine learning model will learn less. less. If variance is zero, Machine learning model will not learn anything. So better to drop that column. Don't include that in analysis in machine learning. Okay. Just remember it is a rule of thumb. I'm not explaining you how machine learning model learns, how variance, how more variance means more learning. That I'm not explaining because this is not a machine learning class. Now, one thing is variance can never be negative. Variance can be zero and positive. It can be large or small but it can never be negative. That is one property of variance. Another property of variance is, variance can uh, always have squared units. I will tell you how. So suppose it is kg. Suppose your data is in kg. Or suppose you are measuring height of school children. That is in centimeter. So all data is in cm, cm, cm. So variance will be in cm square. Variance will be in cm square. And standard deviation will be in cm only because it is square root of variance. So CM square, if I take a square root, square, square root of CM square is always CM only. So standard deviation is same unit as data and variance is always squared unit as data. That is the, that is the thing. Okay, so the, these are the prop, important properties of uh, variance. So standard deviation is also a measure of uh, Standard deviation is also a measure of dispersion. It is just the square root of square root of your variance. So now, now tell me why I need why it is if standard deviation is just a square root, then why I need two measures? One is variance and one is standard deviation. Why I need two measures? This we had discussed many times in the class. Anybody remembers Sarathak or Amit Parikh? Anybody remembers why you need two measures when? 
one is just a square root of other, then why you need two measures, yeah, guys? Any guess? Okay, so I'll explain like suppose I am measuring the height of 100 school children. So they are varying from 4 feet 2 inches to 5 feet 7 inches. Like that the height is his varying. Okay. If I tell you that variance is variance is say 12 inches square. Variance is 12 inches square. It doesn't may have any meaning because my data is in inches. Data is in inches. 5 feet 2 inches to 4 feet 2 inches to 5 feet 7 inches. So my variance, if I tell you, calculate variance and tell you, if variance is 12 inches square, 12 inch square is the variance. So then data, it doesn't have any meaning. From inch square, you don't understand any meaning because it is not a physical quantity. Inch square is nothing. So when your data is in inches, it is meaningful, right? Inch means you understand, it is a length. In square means what? Nothing. In square is just a hypothetical unit. So you want your unit uh, variance to be expressed in the same unit as, as your data. So what you do? You take the square root. So square root of inch square is inch. So if you tell somebody that standard deviation of uh, this 100 height which I am measuring, the 100 day standard deviation is 12 inches or say square root of 12. So square root of 12 is, will be around 3 point something. So 3.2 inches. Then it will carry more meaning. Understood? So standard deviation has same unit as data. So standard deviation physically like in business terms, standard deviation has more meaning uh, compared to variance because the unit is same as data. Got it guys? Got it? Yes sir. Sardak. Next time, if I ask, you should not forget, okay? Sir. Sir, the, 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 the example I re remember. Yeah. The, so now you got like Karthik and Gajendra, you understood? Yeah. Amit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because now, we use that. Now these are the formulas to calculate uh, variance and standard deviation. So just don't worry by sigma. Sigma equal to, uh, sigma from I equal to 1 to N means like x1 minus mu whole square, x2 minus mu whole square, x3 minus mu whole square, x4 minus mu whole square, plus x5 minus mu square, up to x100 minus mu whole square, divide by, divide by n. Now tell me guys, what is mu here? What is mu here? Sir, mean. Mean, right? And see here on the right hand side, Sample is there, right? So left hand side formulas are for uh, population. Same formula for sample, it is little different. So instead of mu, xi minus x bar is written. So what is x bar here in sample? X on the top of, there is a, there is a bar on the top of x, no? So what is x bar here, guys? What is x bar here? See, mu is the mean of population, entire population. If I'm working with population of India, mu is the mean of entire population. Like uh, average income, if I'm calculating for India, average income for Indian people, per capita income. So I'm adding all the nation income divided by number, number of people. So here in that case, N, capital N will be 1.42 billion people. So the mu will represent per capita income of the nation. But if I am working with a sample, I have taken a sample of 3,000 people and I am calculating with their average income, then I cannot represent it with the help of mu. I will represent it with the help of X bar. Got it? X bar is also mean, but X bar is a mean of sample. And mu is the mean of entire population. See the formula. Capital N is representing population of entire and capital N is representing population of number 
capital n is representing num uh, number for entire population so here capital n will be 1.42 billion if i am calculating per capita income average income of india and here sample of 3000 people i am representing with the help of small n so small n will be 3000 because i have taken a sample of only 3000 people so things are same but formula numbers are representation is different mu means populations mean like entire population mean n means capital n means entire population number small n means sample sample population number x bar means x bar means sample population mean got it guys yes sir see sir, the formulas I, I have one question yeah. Yeah. So why are we doing uh, in sample? Why are we doing n minus one in the denominator? <laughs> that is a very big statistics, man. Even uh, average statistician in your college will not be able to tell you this. Very deep into statistics, you have to go. And generally, in applied statistics, we don't go into deep. Okay. So I cannot explain you why here is n and why here is n minus one. It's a good observation. But there is a big statistical theory, big statistical derivation behind it. And the, the guys who do MSc and PhD in statistics, they only will study this. We, as an engineer, we never go into detail. No engineering college will tell you why it is n and why here in a sample it is n minus 1. In applied statistics, we see formula is there, apply the formula and be happy. Got it? Okay, sir. So if you are interested, uh, Google it out. You will get some articles. But half of that will be maybe uh, above your head. And I'm telling you, don't bother. Like if you want to bother, good only. You are interested in things. You have question, good. Do Google for it. I don't know. But in generally engineering colleges, it is not taught. In applied statistics, they will not tell you why population denominator is n and why sample denominator is n minus 1. It's a good observation. I appreciate that. Okay, now, so properties of standard deviation. So variance cannot be negative. So standard deviation cannot be ne negative because I'm taking that this under C. Do you see the formula? Here, formula, just see, there is a difference of, uh, there is just difference of uh, square root. Formula is same. Standard deviation formula is just the square root of uh, variance formula. So variance is always denoted by sigma square. Variance symbol itself is sigma square. Standard deviation sigma is standard is sigma. From both the formula and population, just square root difference. Both the formulas are same. See, so now if variance cannot be negative, standard deviation cannot be negative. If variance can be zero, standard deviation can also be zero. So standard deviation can either be zero or positive. It can be never be negative. If in some measurements or in some uh, experiment, standard deviation is very near to zero, that which your, your uh, experiment is consistent, your measurements are consistent. Okay. If standard deviation is large, that means spread is large. Okay. If standard deviation is zero means Distribution is normal curve. If standard deviation is equal to zero, that means your data spread is the data spread curve which you are plotting, frequency on the y-axis and uh, values on x-axis. If you are plotting, that will be a perfect bell curve, Gaussian curve. If standard deviation is more, then it will be a skewed curve. No, not like that. It cannot be negative. Values are similar. Standard are very close to zero. Standard deviation is far from zero. No, you don't go. I'm very sorry. Don't go by skewness of the curve. Skewness of the curve will come a little later. So see these observations. The, the smallest standard deviation value is zero. It cannot be negative. That we got. When groups data values are similar, standard deviation will be very low or zero. When data values are very close to each other, standard deviation either will be zero or they will be very close to each other. When data values are far from each other, very each other from each other, the standard deviation value will be high or far from zero. These are the inferences right now. So skewness things uh, you cannot depend. 
skewness things you cannot derive with the help of standard deviation. That was uh, just I got uh, confused for a bit. Sorry for that. So uh, like whether data is skewed or not, that you cannot determine with the help of standard deviation value alone. Okay, so how you can determine whether your data is skewed or not? Data curve is skewed or not? You calculate all the three, mean, median, and mode. If mean, median, and mode are equal, that means what? Data is skewed or not skewed, guys? If mean, median, mode all are same, that means your data is uh, skewed or not skewed, guys? It's not skewed. Not skewed, guys. No? In your Gaussian curve, in the center, everything is in the center. Mean also is the same, median also same, and the mode also same. Okay. So, and if mean, median, mode are different, then definitely your data is skewed. So, to determine skewness of the data, you just calculate mean, median, and mode of that data set. Now, I'll take you to little, uh, I'll take you a little deep into. I'm not taking you to the differences between variance and standard deviation much. Already we have discussed everything. Only thing which you remember here is standard deviation is represented using sigma square and it is square of the unit. If data is in centimeter, variance will be in centimeter square. But if and a standard deviation is denoted by sigma, Sigma, if data is in centimeter, standard deviation will also be in centimeter. If data is in centimeter, variance will be in centimeter square and it is denoted by sigma square. Okay. So this is only I want to tell. Otherwise, both represent spread. And uh, if both quantities are near to zero, that means uh, data is consistent nearby to each other. If spread, is, if standard deviation or variance value is more, then data is spread out. Okay. So now tell me, guys, again, I'm asking you the same question. Like uh, if you are doing one experiment, suppose you are measuring a bolt, bolt diameter in a lathe machine. Lathe machine is producing bolt diameter. You are measuring the diameter of uh, that bolt with the help of a vernier caliper. Suppose 100 measurements you have taken. So you have 100 values of diameter now. So you would like to have uh, standard deviation uh, near to zero or far from zero? Near to zero. Near to zero, right? Why near to zero? Uh, if you're near to zero, then uh, diameter, all the di bolt diameter are same as per requirement. Yes. They will be very close to each other, right? Either 10.01, 10.02, 10.005, 10 like that they will be. So if standard deviation is very high, that means I should throw away that uh, lot, world lot itself. And I should see what is wrong in the process. Now we are looking at one simple mathematical example. Simple mathematical example on how to calculate variances and deviation. It will be very easy to calculate. This formula look very complicated. So I'm telling you one very simple example. So now here, X is some, uh, like suppose diameter of the bolt. Suppose X is the diameter of the bolt. I have only five records. Suppose it is three, one, one is three inch, one is eight inch, one is 13 inch, one is 18 inch, one is 23 inch, only five values I have. Then what is F below guys? What is F below? Can you guess what is F? What do I so Frequency. Frequency, yes, F is frequency. Means three value, Three inch I'm getting, seven bolts are of three inches. 10 bolts are of eight inches. 15 bolts are of 13 inches. 10 bolts are of 18 inches. And six bolts are of 23 inches. So six is nothing but frequency. They're count. That's how, suppose this data is given. Suppose this frequency is not there. Suppose you have only five values. There is no frequency, no repeat of values. Then all the frequencies will be one, one, one only. Suppose 3, 8, 13, 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. There is nothing repetition and only five values. Then all the frequencies will be 1, 1, 1. Because I have one bolt, one bar diameter, I have only unique bolt. Now here, I have a little more generalized data. So I have measurements. So seven bolts, seven bolts, seven bolts of three inch, suppose 10 bolts of 18 inch, like that I have. Five bolts. Five different count. 
like that I data how. And now you have to find standard deviation as an engineer. So what you have to do? What formula, formula, this formula is good actually to remember. But uh, if you remember this table, you will be able to do it. So, so first you do what? First you find the values. X, X is nothing but your diameter of the bolt. So 3 inch, 18, 13 inch, 18 inch and 23 inch. That is X. So X is nothing but your top. 3, 8, 13, 18 and frequency. So here capital F is frequency. So 7, 10, 15, 10 and 6. See, same value is repeated. Same value is repeated. 7, 10, 15, 10 and 6. Like that, two columns are there. Now you multiply both. You multiply both. You multiply both. F into, you multiply 7 into 3, 21. 8 into 10, 80. 13 into 15, 195. 18 into 10, 180. And 23 into 6, 138. Simple. F and X, respective multiplication I have done. Now you do what one thing? Now see, it is X minus X bar. X minus X bar means from every X value, I have to, I have to, I have to, from every X value, I have to deduct its mean. From every X value, I have to deduct its mean. Now, you will calculate mean of X column or F column, guys. Which mean you will calculate? Which mean you will calculate? F column. No, X column. X are the real values. Okay. X are the real values. F is the frequency. Yeah? F is the okay. count. Okay. So real values are F, X. So X mean you will calculate. So can anybody calculate with their mobile or calculator if you have? Calculate the mean of 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. Just calculate the mathematical average. Just uh, do some taklif uh, karo uh, thoda or just uh, take uh, your calculator and calculate the mean of uh, 3, 8, 8, 13, 18, and 23. What is the mean? Sir, I think 13 would achieve. Dekh lo na, I want exact value. Just put on the mobile and divide by 5, no? Just set up on mobile and divide by 5. That's how it is, right? 13, sir. 30, exactly 13 or 13? Exa exactly 13. Now, exactly 13. So, it is not coming exactly 13, Anna. Sir, I have that calculated in Excel. Sir, total is 65. Yeah, ah. divided by 13. So, Divide now, uh, probably he is calculating mean of FI and XI. Just calculate mean of FI and XI column. FI and XI column. 17, 15, 10, 6. No, not say FI into XI. 21, 80, 195, 180, 138. Add them, divide oh, by okay. 5. Okay. 21, 80, 80. You put in Excel. 21, 80. Huh? Now 195, 180, and uh, one, uh, 138. Just see the mean. One twenty two point eight. Huh? One twenty two point eight. One twenty two point eight. Yeah. One eighty, one thirty eight, one ninety five, eighty, twenty one. Yes. That is your total is coming six hundred and fourteen or not? Six hundred and fourteen. Yes. Divide, divide by forty eight. You do divide by forty eight. Forty eight. Okay. It's a twelve point seventy nine. Ah, so that will be the average. Why how much angel will wait wait you how much is the average 12.79 uh, 12 12.79 12 minus uh, you do minus 3 12.79 minus 3 how much it's a 9.79 ah so now what he has done you understood what yes. he has done he has first added the all the how he has taken the average he has not simple added. He has just taken all the frequencies added first. So all count added. So 48 total volts are there. He has total 48 volts. Now FI and XI. FI and XI, he has that product. He has added up. So total 614 FI into XI. 
So F I into X I divided by forty eight is the total. Uh, that is the right way of calculating uh, the mathematical average. Because why? Because your three will be repeated seven times. Suppose I have forty eight bolts total here. F I count is forty eight, right? So three bolts I have seven times. So I will be writing three seven times. So instead of writing three seven times, I can do three into seven. Then eight into ten because eight will be repeated ten times. So eight into ten, then thirteen into fifteen, then ten into eight, eighteen into ten, then twenty three into six, all added up. So now all forty eight added up, divided by forty eight. You got it? How the calculator is it is calculated? Yes. And why it is F I X I by for F I? You got it now? Yes. Sir. Because three seven the frequency is seven more. No? That means in the forty-eight bolt, three is repeated seven times. Like that, everything eight is repeated ten times. So like that, you have to do F I into X I divided by total frequency. Got it? So you got the mean. Mean is how much? Twelve point seven. Now you subtract ten point seven nine from twenty-three. Ten point seven nine minus twenty three minus ten point seven nine. How much? So ten point two one. Ten point two one. So now you got how to get the column number three x x i minus x bar. Got it, guys? Every anybody confusion? First you calculated x bar. So x bar is nothing but f i x i divided by f f f you have to do right. So f is forty eight. F i x i is six one four. Six one four divided by forty eight is your average. Average is deducted from. Average is deducted from all the xi values. So xi minus x bar. Got it, guys? Got it, guys? How you you got it, Amit Parikh? Xi yes, minus x bar. Then next you have to do square of. Yes, it. sir. So nine point seven nine. If you do square, it will come as ninety five point eight four. Similarly, ten point two one. If you do square, it will come as one point one zero four point two four. Now then, what you will do? This x square into f, x square into f. Like again, you will multiply this by f frequency because ninety point ninety point eight four is being repeated seven times. This x i minus x bar whole square, na? So ninety point point ninety five point eight four is being repeated seven times. So you have to multiply f i x x i minus x bar whole square into f. All products being calculated. So these product like row, row uh, column number one, two, three, column number four and five is multiplied. Not no column number five and column number two are multiplied. Column number five and column number two are multiplied. See here, column number five and column number two are multiplied. You get it. So you get it total one nine one seven nine seven point three two. So now to calculate variance. You have to just divide by total frequency, forty-eight. So now you got variance. Variance is thirty-three point four four, and uh, standard deviation is square root of thirty-three point four four is six point one two. Six point one two is standard deviation. See, I last two three step, but I have done little hurry over. So you got it, guys? How to calculate? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Amit yes, Parikh, you got it. See this x i minus x bar. You have to do yes. for every bolt. For every bolt, x i minus x bar. You have to do whole square, right? X i minus x bar whole square. You have to do yes. for every bolt. So three is repeated seven times. That's why this x i minus x bar whole square. You have to multiply by seven. Twenty-two by nine point nine four. You have to do eight times. Sorry, ten times. So twenty-two point nine four into ten. Like that, you have to do multiply. And then divide by total frequency. Total yeah. frequency means total number of bolts. Total frequency is nothing but total number of bolts. So you divide it by forty-eight. So you get thirty-eight point four four. And then, uh, so if you put this kind of table and uh, arrange it, then you need not worry about formula and all, right? Yes. Remembering the table also, same formula automatically applies. Gajendra, you got how calculations are done? Yes, sir. 
how you how the column number 6 is calculated you got it yes yes i got it and why we multiplied also you got it yes yes so that is how standard deviation and uh, uh, variance are calculated and suppose my each value is unique then my frequency will be automatic one only i need not consider frequency and if my frequency is uh, every value is unique my frequency will be one 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 in every case so my all multiplier will be one only i need not consider frequency column i just do x minus x bar whole square there is no frequency because every value is unique but here every value is repeating so frequency you have to consider so this is what is standard deviation and uh, variance so standard deviation is suppose volt is mm so variance is having a unit of 37.44 mm square variance and standard deviation is having a unit of 6.12 mm so standard deviation makes more sense in physical sense because mm is the same unit as we measure length of the uh, diameter of the bolt so you will understand is how much variance how much spread is there i think i will close here